Yo, what is going on everybody? It is Rush, and welcome to week 5 of the Pokemon Speedruns Draft League. Um, this is a new thing that I'm starting, uh, doing a little bit of a weekly recap as I'm not even on the right slide. Yay, let's go to this one. So with me, I got a special guest today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I am Battle Dolphin, coach of the Jim Boom and Jigglypuffs in this. Alright, so let's take a look at the overall standings right now. So in first place, we have Garfield the Lightning with a perfect 5-0 record. Notice that uh, 12, um, positive 12 differential, and uh, his team MVP is Jolteon. His team score is uh, is 64, and we'll, we'll talk about team score here in a little bit. Second place is uh, myself with the Huntsville Heatran with a 4-1 and one record and a plus 13 differential. My MVP is Raikou, and I have that beautiful 69 team score. Third place is Draws and the Blackpool Blastoise. 3 and 2 record, plus 7 differential, MVP Suicune. Fourth place, Fades and the Paris Saint Germain, with a 3 and 2 record, plus 7 differential once again. And uh, Mega Scizor is the MVP with the 53 team score. Fifth place is. Ooh, that's myself. With so, three yeah. wins, two losses, like a lot of the coaches currently. But a six differential, a little bit different. And my team MVP is Exodrill, puts in all that work. And a team score of 49. Sixth place is the Briar Breloom's a coach row. Three and two record with a plus five differential. Notice how uh, he's he started out the season two and or oh and two and has won his last three matches. MVP is Tapu Koko. Camden Cryogonals in seventh place with a three and two record with a plus five. Team MVP is Kartana. New England Braviary is uh, coached by Missile Sticks in eighth place. Three and two record once again, plus four differential with uh, Mega Altaria as his MVP with a team score of 46. Then Bludgeoners with Coach Eternalore in the ninth place with the plus one differential once again uh three wins and two losses and his mvp is mega swampert which i'd like to kindly note that mega swampert has died every single match <laughs> with and uh he's got a team score of 37. the kentucky fried crawdon coached by sir Arandite, is one and four with a minus seven differential a lot of his matches have been really close um his team MVP is Umbreon, and he's got a very low team score with 9. Oakland Adaptability, coached by Major, with the 1 win and 4 loss different, um, wow, record, with the minus 11 differential, with a team score of 10. MVP is Thunderous Incarnate, which uh, I'd like to add. He only picked that up two weeks ago. Uh, Baffling Amoeba, or Amoeba. And the Wolverhampton Waddlers are in 12th place, 1 and 4, also minus 11 differential. MVP is Galvantula uh, with a team score of 10. The Flavortown Flygons and Coach Shape are 1 and 4 with a minus 13 differential. Team MVP is Typhlosion and he has a team score of only 4. And um, after getting off to a really terrible start, Etiquette finally pulled out a win this week and boosted his record to 1 and 4 with the minus 19 differential. His team MVP is the um, very threatening Lapras. <laughs> uh, do you want to know anything on this right now? Uh, yeah, not too much to say. There's, you know, the clear big gap from ninth and lower where everyone is either 1 and 4 or 3 and 2 except for the top two places but yeah yeah um, it's we ended up doing a like a little power rankings thing so it was really difficult to to rank like the middle people just because of how close they all are in terms of like skill record and um it, a lot of it came down to just who had the mo the more difficult matches uh to deal with so uh i promised I'd mention what team score is. So what team score is, is basically it takes your direct kills, uh, multiplies it by two, then adds your passive kills, then um, adds like the number of survivals that your team had, multiplies that by two, 
and then uh, subtract the total number of deaths that you had. So that's why you see like a very high difference in between um, 9th and 10th place in terms of team score. Just because of uh, having more uh, wins means you have more survivals, which is uh, pretty indicative of how well your team is doing. I think that that team score is a good formula of showing uh, exactly what that is. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the the uh, the MVP race, which is personally my favorite. Um, this is like my favorite page in the entire document because we get to see exactly who gets who gets all the kills and um, what moves get all the kills. So as you can see, far and away, earthquake is the most popular move of choice to kill pokes. Um, some fun things to note: if you see uh, move recoil. Three people have died to move recoil here after five weeks. Five people have died from suicides. Um, there have been like three explosions, one memento, and was there a healing wish at all? Do you do you remember? Uh, there definitely might have been. Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> so it was like people just sacking bonds. I find that amusing. Eight hidden power kills compared to ten bullet punch kills. Bullet punch after week one was actually the uh, the number one move to kill people. It was it was hilarious, and uh, yeah, in in recent weeks, Thunderbolt has really started gaining popularity, thanks in part to uh, to Raikou here, which is my MVP. As you can see, in terms of Pokemon MVPs, Mega Scizor and Heatran from Fades' team, the Paris Saint Germain, actually occupy the top two spots. And they've been like bouncing back and forth. Um, who's the MVP? Boy, it, it's not necessarily because those pokes are flat out dominating, but it's just that they've gotten almost every single kill for Fade so far. I think he has a total of like 26 kills, and as you can see, 19 are between those two. So it's kind of insane. Um, fun thing. Other fun thing to note, yeah, you see Clefable. Uh, Clefable's right here underneath Swampert sitting in the 12th place. Uh, I believe it got one sweep off. It was like a, <laughs> it was a, like a five kill sweep a couple weeks ago. So it's a fun thing to note. Uh, yeah. My personal favorite <laughs> is down here at rank 18, my Swampert. Because it dies in almost every game that I bring it, but almost nothing else does. So yeah, uh, that is the MVP race, but uh, let's go ahead and shift gears. We're going to talk about some matches. So uh, starting off, um, Ro here is going to, or wow, let's try this again. <laughs> Battle Dolphin is going to lead us off in talking about match number one, which uh, is Ro versus Sir Arendite. So do you want to go ahead and set the scene? Yeah, um, so Sir Arendite was playing really well around all of Rose threats, as you can see, he has Tapu Koko and Holucha and Volcanion, three really big offensive threats. But you can see it's currently four to six here at turn 38. And when Rose kind of just thinking, oh, he's in the back, I'm just going to go into Holucha, you know, see what happens. And he does, he brings it in. And then... I think that was a predicted, uh, predicted need to stay in, up, so like, just, <laughs> just Earth Powers. Yeah, definitely. And then he just sets up, you know, as you do. And Sir Andai comes in with the Togekiss, you know, the usual counter. He's got the Babiri Berry, so he's got the prep down, but he gets this flinch, which is very pivotal. Because now he doesn't know the moveset of the Holucha, and he predicts the switch, so he gets up to plus four. And then Holusha just starts ripping through Sir and that team because you know plus four Holusha is a monster. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, uh, Sir Arendite does sack the Alakazam there. Holusha goes on to get a, a couple more kills and essentially seals the game. But uh, Sir Arendite actually had a tank in the form of Agron, and he had Roar, so he had the possibility of roaring out the Holusha and preserving his Alakazam. 
So if he had yeah. roared out the Halucha, Alkazam actually outsped the entire rest of Rose team, and I believe one hit KO'd every single one of them. So it was a crucial couple of turns that uh, really messed up uh, Sir Arendite's rhythm, especially there with that flinch on Togekiss. And uh, he yeah. ended up losing the match, what was it, 3 0? Yes. Yeah, it was 3 0. Yeah, 3 0. Next match was um, Roush versus Mizzle Sticks. Go ahead, take it away, man. <laughs> so this match, um, Roush came probably the best the best prepared this week out of any other coach. Um, he had many amazing techs to deal with all of his, all of Mizzle Sticks' threats. Um, and as you can see, it's already 5-3 at turn 14. And I believe that at this point, the Salamence is on 1% as well. Yes. Worth no so at this point, he can just, Rash can just bring in Raikou, set up a free sub. Well, somewhat free. And then it, you'll see the misplay here, turn 15. Ditto doesn't transform behind the sub, which is big. Because then he just lets Rash set up. And Salamence is at 1%, so Raikou can just clean sweep through the rest. Yep. So it ended up being a 4 0 in favor of Roush this, this match. As you can see, Raikou just set up and proceeded to kill Savali and Ditto. Next match uh, is Major R versus uh, RX Fades. At this point, um, Fades has tricked a choice ban, or no, sorry, a choice specs onto a guard chomp. He killed off um, a Babiri Berry, Sylveon, and a Blastoise, uh, and has a Spike and I believe a Stealth Rock also on the field. So what he's going to do here is after setting up and uh, sacking off his Clef Key, he's going to go into his Mega Scizor, which is I believe bulky SD kind of set. As you can see, it takes nothing from the Hidden Power Fire from this uh, this. Uh, the Mega Venusaur, and even at plus three, was able uh, to not take out the Venusaur. It was so bulky. But then Major makes a crucial misplay and sacks off his Tornadus, or his Thunderous. I'm sorry. Even though the Garchomp could just kill Scizor with the Rough Skin, so now unfortunately he's just left with the the Infernape, and Blandurus is able to just finish it off here with the uh, with the earthquake after rocky helmet damage so it ended up being a, a 4-0 in favor of fades um just a, a couple of misplays by major and the match might have turned out a little bit differently might have been a little bit closer but a uh, good prep on fades part to bring the correct scissor set to be able to deal with uh, major's relatively bulky team that's a kind of a scary team if he's got his A game coming. Any comments? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's also a small oversight on maybe Major's part. Maybe he had packed the HP ground for Heatran, but he he didn't have the HP fire for Sizzle. It was a neutral hidden power. That's why Sizzle was able to just was it set neutral? up all over. I thought it was a. Yeah. Oh, it was neutral. Oh, you're right. All right, that that is my bad. That was an HP ground, wasn't it? Hmm. I am bad. Yeah, he had prepared, probably over-prepared for the Heatran, which is interesting because Venusaur gets Earthquake, so he could have had both, but yeah. Yeah, I th but if you do that, you end up either losing Sludge Bomb for Tangrowth or Grass Move for Slowbro, so just a really nice yeah. spread of, of moves that allowed Fades to take control of the match. Next, mm, next match. Oh, this is my favorite play of the week. This is, without <laughs> a doubt, the top play. The top prep, the top everything, Battle Dolphin versus Draws. As you can see, the Suicune is set all the way up. This Porygon has kind of just let Suicune set up, just chipped away with a couple of try attacks. And now the Suicune goes up to plus, uh, plus six, plus six with Calm Minds. So what Dolphin does here, he goes ahead and psychs up all the Suicune boosts and uh, has the nice tech with the Psy Shock to be able to hit Suicune on the physical defensive side and be able to take it out with the uh, with the Psy Shock and then proceeds to KO the, the uh, Mega Charizard X. So what that does is it gets Suicune out of the way, which honestly, outside of Primarina, 
Um, Dolphin didn't really have a way of breaking down Suicune uh, because Suicune won it KO'd everything else. So being able to uh, just bait all those Calm Minds and then be able to take it out in a one fell swoop is, is, is really genius. I, I can appreciate such heat. So shout outs to you and that beautiful, beautiful play. Uh, next match was Garf versus Gino. Go ahead. Yeah, so this was a really exciting match, actually. Um, they were, they, the match was like pretty even most of the time. Um, there was a crucial gear grind miss by Kling Klang on turn one, which um, let uh, hit, which let Garf keep his Tauros, which we'll see later is a pretty big deal. But right. yeah, and then. Bye. The match just proceeds as normal. They're both playing really well. And then we get to, I believe it is turn 19 or turn 20, where yep. um, Entei comes in on the choice locked Katana into Sacred Sword. And um, he's stomping tantrums the Katana, predicting the Tox Effect switch or the Camera, sack, camera Up Sack. Whereas if, if Gino stayed in on that turn and clicked Sacred Sword, he would have he would have won the game. But, you know, a good play by Garth, I suppose. <laughs> it worked out. Yep. And then, yeah, Crocodile can just manage to come in and and basically force Gino to sack him on, and then it just crumbles from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely... Sacking the camera up on that turn specifically, I think was a misplay. Uh, although I'm not sure Stomping Tantrum might have been able to, to hit KO Toxapex. But uh, good job to Garf and Entei. I think Entei got three or four kills that match. It was it was a good match for Entei. Good it was well. a really nice bring. All right, second to last match here. We got Baffling Amoeba versus Eternal War. Mono Bug versus Rain. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. So this match is also really interesting. Um. Eternal War had prepped really well for the bugs. He doesn't have very many stab moves on his mons actually because of it. And um, yeah, the first, about turn two to four, as you'll see here, Swampert missing multiple stone edges in a row on the Araquanid. Which, you know, Araquanid is a very threatening Pokemon, especially in his opponent's reign. And then, yeah, that lost him his Kabutops, because I imagine that Eternal Orb was kind of freaking out and like, I can't deal with this dodging Araquanid, so he goes into the Kabutops, and it dies to the brain-boosted liquidation, which, yeah, no no real shocker there, but... No. Uh, and yeah. then Amoeba goes on to uh, win the game later with uh, Galvantula. Galvantula kind of sweeps with the Thunder plus Giga Drain plus Bug Buzz. So it was a, a nice prep on Amoeba's part, but definitely got some huge help by all those stone miss hits. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And then uh, last match this week was uh, Etiquette versus Shape. Etiquette has a little bit of a, a sun core with the Torkoal and the Shift Tree. Uh, but the star of the match is going to turn out to be this Haxorus. As you can see... Uh, at plus one, everything that's left on the field, the Ferrothorn being very weakened, the Typhlosion, the, uh, the Megalopony, and the Metagross should die to um, Earthquake, plus one Earthquake from Haxorus, although Metagross might live if he's really super bulky. So uh, yeah, Etiquette's able to just set up to his Haxorus after getting all these other Pokemon weakened. Uh, Lopany ends up being a two-hit KO. That's right. But the the play that I think lost shape the match was he didn't go into this Metagross earlier. As you can see, it was uh, Shuckaberry, and then the Metagross was able to take out the Hexers with uh, with a Mirror Mash. The match could have been a lot closer, if not um, a win for Shape, if he had just uh, used his Meta uh, his Metagross earlier. But uh, who knows? Maybe he was trying to save it until Lopany got chipped off. But yeah, definitely. yeah, it was it was also, definitely. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's probably worth noting that um, Lopany didn't go for the fake out on the Haxorus as well, which 
Um, because Lopony lives a hit, Fake Out plus Return had killed the Haxorus. As you can see, it's on 14%, and that Fake Out true. easily does 14%. That, that, that is, is very true. much true. I, so, uh, with all that in mind, let's go ahead and shift gears. We're going to go back to uh, back to this page. We're going to go over to the power rankings for this week. And I goofed it. Cool. <laughs> Dang it. That's what happens when you use keys for um, transitions. So, uh, week five, this this was... Uh, we kind of converged came up with uh, with some power rankings as uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of this pretty much teams three through eight because I uh, honestly the brain team the bludgeoners were kind of easy to place you kind of had to place them a little <laughs> bit lower so but teams three through eight who all had three and two records they all played relatively strong opponents got wins against strong opponents got losses against strong opponents but overall they played very close to each other so it was really difficult to place three through eight but uh first pick was very obvious uh, garfield i uh, five and zero record he's played extremely well every week at uh, number two roush with the uh, the four and one record he's played okay Every week except for one. <laughs> let's 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 make a nice little note here. Uh, Roush's matches have not had a differential of anything less than three, or anything less than four. Sorry. That's, like that's they've all been four O's, five O's, six O's. So they've <laughs> they've been really uh, hit or miss, if you will. So we ended up coming up with the the third rank. Uh, we went ahead and put Battle Dolphin there because of just the nature how strong the opponents were that he lost against uh he's lost against uh, you're gonna need to correct me on this one but you've lost against me and ro no 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 you no, beat ro um, mizzle, you new oh. england Raven. yeah mizzle sticks so he's yeah. very very high caliber opponents and it just beat out like how everybody or how good everybody else's opponents have been so that's why yeah um, he's ranked third even though on the standings it's probably also worth lower. noting that um the loss to mizzle six was only a 1-0 which yeah, that's i don't true. think there are too many 1-0s in nope. general nope not really i think we've had like four maybe in the first five weeks something mm. like that so fourth rank is gonna be uh fades in the paris saint germain uh he's his is probably the most difficult to to rank. Yeah. I think we this did this tough. more or less on the strength of the how clean his matches were played rather than the caliber of his opponents. Because he's lost yeah. to uh, the Bludgeoners and the Caledonia Deerling. So he's lost to Gino and Garfield. But he's beaten Draws, Shape, and uh, Major and uh, Shape and Major were convincing victories. They were 4 O's. So mm. more or less based on how well he's played in those matches was why he was ranked fourth. Uh, fifth place is the is Coach Rowe and the Broward Breilooms. His only losses have been to uh, Dolphin and Garfield. But since then, he's yeah. had very convincing matches against Major. Uh, I, myself, Roush, and the uh, Kentucky Fried Crawdon. 405030 respectively. So he's got a lot of momentum coming in. I couldn't yeah. in my right mind put him any lower than 5th just because it's also of his momentum. Worth noting. Yeah, definitely. It's also worth noting that um both of the losses were at the start of the of the season. So he kind of like realized his team's mistakes and he patched them up in week 3 so that he could get on and get these three strong wins in a row. That's true. Yeah. He brought he brought on uh, Don Fan and Chestnut for extra defensive pressure over a Lowland Marowak yeah. and Healy Lisk. And uh, honestly, having extra bulk really forces uh, people to redo some of their team comps. And now it's more of yeah, a balanced absolutely. team instead of a straight-out hyper offense, which is what it used to be. And it's it's mm -hmm. a really strong team. And I, I, think, I think he's going to make playoffs for sure. Yeah, same. 
Next place, uh, we ended up putting Mizzle at rank 6. Although it's a huge drop off in terms of overall rankings from last week, uh, just because <laughs> Mizzle has beaten um, Dolphin, and um, but he lost to, to Roush this last week. He had to be placed above Geno just because he's beaten Geno before, but all of his matches have been his have been really good. He just had a couple of misplays this last week, but for the most part, his play has been very clean. Um, just really, really solid. Yeah. Uh oh, I think I screwed up the MVP race page. Oh well, I'll fix it in a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I think I did. I think I fucked it up. Oh well. But um, Mizzle Sticks just has a really strong team, really strong offensive team, and has been using it really well. So we couldn't place him any lower than sixth. Seventh place is uh, Coach Draws and the. Uh, the Blackpool Blastoise. Yeah, um, we kind of placed him here mostly because of like his matches have been going super well. He's he tends to really overwhelm some of the inexperienced players, and but at the same time he bring he tends to bring a lot of the same stuff every week. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's really successful. Susceptible to like the fancy text like psych up psych shock Paragon to it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but the uh, the other thing about draws is he's lost to Fades and Battle Dolphin, but his wins were against uh, the people at the bottom of the rankings. So his schedule as of now has been relatively easy in comparison. So that's why he's ranked lower, is just based on the caliber of his opponents. Next, play, uh, next place, the 8th on the rankings is going to be Geno. His matches have been really good, um, all except for his match against Shape, determined by two pokes or less. So it's just really close all around. Really nice back and forth play. Um, decent use of Toxic Packs and supporting cast but really good um, usage out of Zygarde and Kartana being very threatening mons to the entire metagame. It's, it's really beautiful um, seeing how, uh, how good he's able to, to make it, uh, to make them, even though he picked Mega Camerupt, which is far and away the yeah. worst, the worst Mega mm -hmm. that anybody drafted. And as, as you saw, oh, yes. even this week, it didn't do anything it is positive. Far, far worse than Mega Audino, I agree. Yeah, Mega Audino <laughs> is a very niche mon, I love but it, it yeah. you you showed me that it it's decent. <laughs> like it took man, it took setting up to plus two to even two hit KO the thing. Two hit KO. Mm. That thing is darn bulky. Alright, uh ninth place is the rain team at Bludgeoner. The Bludgeoners eh. his team is strong on paper but I feel like he hasn't been playing it to its greatest potential. Like he's he's uh really gotten caught off guard with um letting his uh Pelipper die quickly slash not being aggressive enough with it. He's it's kind of like back and forth. He he's going from one extreme to the other and not really utilizing it well. Pelipper is mm. the complete glue to any rain team, unless you have Politoed, which, honestly, he drafted Politoed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of unfortunate because he's probably one of the least experienced people in the draft league, and he has one of the strongest teams on paper, as Rash said. But he... oh, it's it's a really hard uh, it's uh, it's a hard team to use too. Uh, so yeah, and he so he doesn't really quite know like what his opponents might try and do to be able to break down rain, really. Mm -hmm. Tenth place is the uh, Kentucky Fried Crawdon. Uh, this Sir Arundite is um, arguably the least experienced uh, competitive Pokemon player out of the entire group. Um, but he's had really close matches, in part because he's playing um, no offense to you, buddy, but 
you've been playing with the easiest play style, which is pretty much pseudo stall, yeah. with uh, with a core of melodic Umbreon, Amungus, Togekiss, just being able to Agron. oh yeah, and Mega Agron, duh, being able to yeah. just tank hits, uh, switch in, switch around, has a nice wish with uh, with Umbreon, and everybody covers each other's weaknesses pretty well. But you really don't have good experience. There, you've made a lot of questionable plays. Um, but you have made all of your matches really close. So that's why you're ranked at number ten instead of any bit lower. Yeah, um, I'm definitely ready for him to pull some more wins out later in the season. Oh yeah, he's as soon as he gets some more battle experience, I think he's he's showing that he's he's getting better at using his team. Yeah. But honestly, um, I know I've helped him with a bunch of team builds early on because he is so inexperienced. He That's something that he needs to, to get better at uh, as the season goes mm -hmm. on. All right. 11th place, uh, we put Major and the Oakland Adaptability. He's got a really interesting team. I, I call it borderline bad. <laughs> He's got <laughs> hazard clears with... Thunderous, Armaldo, and Blastoise. He has three hazard setters with Armaldo, Garchomp, and Infernape. So he doesn't have the greatest hazard control. In fact, he's probably got the worst hazard control out of everybody. Because yeah. none of those mons are really good at setting up hazards. And the clears aren't really good at clearing hazards. Like, uh, Thunderous is nice with the Prankster. Um, defog, but it really takes up a needed move slot for coverage yeah, if he's trying to definitely. use it for offense. And of course, Thunderous has pitiful defenses and a plethora of weaknesses. So it's something that he has to keep keep track of. Um, but Blastoise isn't isn't as bulky as it used to be. I know that sounds weird, but. 79, 100, 105 doesn't go as far as you would think once you start putting investment into it. Yeah. And uh, Rapid Spin isn't... Rapid Spin is susceptible to the ghost types. So, just not really solid hazard clear. His team speed is pretty slow. He's got three fast mons and then everything else just drops off the table. So he's he's got uh, Thunderous... Infernape and Garchomp all above 100 and then he drops down to 80 and then 78 and then into this uh, lower 70s and 60s. So not a lot of team speed. He's really susceptible. Um, yeah. And, and it's worth noting that um, those three offensive mons aren't super fast themselves. Like there's no there's nothing above like 115 or anything like up to the really high numbers. Yeah and it's predictable because he has to bring a choice scarfer pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, your team has potential, but I feel like your plays so far and the way you've been using them hasn't been brought to the greatest of uh, their abilities. 12th place, moving up in the world, we have Baffling Amoeba <laughs> and the Wolverhampton Waddlers. Amoeba is a terrific battler. I've known him for a long time. He's a very prominent member of the community, the PSR community. And um, glad to see him get a win. He tends to bring the same Pokemon every week. Uh, because, unfortunately, when you draft Monobug, it's not that <laughs> deep. It's not that deep. You tend to run a bunch of the same team. But he's done pretty well with it. Uh, getting better, of course, as he adapts to the way everybody preps for him. But, unfortunately, he's just had one hell of a schedule. Mm. Um, to start the season. As of now, uh, he's not played anybody with a rank lower than 6. So he's faced Dolphin, myself, Mizzle Sticks, Drawls, and now um, the Bludgeoners, who only just now dropped out of the top 6 in terms of ranking. So Amoeba's been playing the highest caliber of opponents so far, and then his schedule looks to get a little bit easier in the coming weeks but definitely watch for him to get some kills he plays 
really well. He's got some of the best prep um, in terms of scouting his opponents that anybody that anybody has, and it's only getting better. So I can't wait to see what he does the rest of the season. Absolutely, should be hype. Mm -hmm. Second from the bottom, unfortunately, we have Shape and the uh, the Flavor Town Flygons. His only win. So far, was against uh, Sir Aaron Dite and the Kentucky Fried Crawdon, but he's he's had kind of a difficult schedule. But because he just lost to Etiquette, we didn't feel that he was worth anything more than second from the bottom. Sorry, that's not supposed to be um, a. That's not supposed to be evil. That's just being brute honest tough love you know i hope to see you do better you've got a nice team but you need to work on bringing different mons and really changing up the sets because you have a threatening team if you use it right he's got stuff like uh, landers incarnate which i think he's allowed to just straight up die on the first turn like two or three different times yeah, that he's brought definitely. in so he needds to work on using landers better ferrothorn has been great for you I, I can appreciate how well you've used it. Um, Typhlosion, I feel like Typhlosion sucks. I feel like mm -hmm. you could be bringing other Pokemon each week, freeing up a slot. Um, you still haven't brought Komo'o. Komo'o is a really fun Pokemon to use if you if you decide to bring it. So hopefully we'll see that it's one in also, the future. Yeah, it's also one of his Z-Mons, so that like already limits like heaps of options if you just never bring Komo'o. Mm -hmm. And his other his other mons Cobalion, so they're both really reliant on setup to get that extra damage. Whereas mm. opposed to something like if he wanted to bring Landorus, he would have like instant power. Because uh, Cobalion and Kamo'o really don't have the greatest offenses. Although Kamo'o has respectable 101 or 110 attack and 100 special attack, it just doesn't have a deep enough move pool to take advantage of Z moves straight away. But I hope to see Shape pull out some more wins, because he's, he's got a really interesting team. And I, I do hope to see more of him in the future. And then unfortunately at the uh, the bottom of the barrel we have Etiquette. I think Etiquette is also inexperienced with uh, competitive Pokemon in general, because I've noticed he's brought a couple of weird sets. He put Defense Curl on something the other week. I can't remember where it was. <laughs> And I was like, wait a second, what? Where did that come from? But he's he's got a very interesting team. He's got dual dual weather in the form of Torkoal plus Tyranitar, but he doesn't have any mons that abuse the sand. And it wasn't until after a couple weeks that he picked up Shift Tree to help abuse the sun. So he's got an interesting team comp. Uh, he's got very threatening mons, obviously like Haxorus, he's got Cresselia. Cresselia can be really scary if uh, used correctly. Um, but so far, his his best mon in terms of like usage and in the MVP race is his Lapras. And I'm really impressed with his usage <laughs> of Lapras. This dude knows how to use the Loch Ness monster. Yeah, he's, absolutely. He's, he's brought... Very, he's brought a special version with stall. It, it's kind of interesting, and I, I, I hope to see some of that creative prep be extended to some of his other mons as he continues to gain experience and get better. Uh, but yeah, look for I look for kind etiquette. Of wish, yeah, definitely. I kind of wish that I ver that I got to verse etiquette earlier in the season, just so that it would be moderately easier. But I actually verse him last, so. Yeah, we'll get to see exactly how much he yeah. advances. So yeah, anyway, yeah. that's um, that's all for us this week. Uh, come back next week. Um, we'll try and make it a little bit quicker next week. I know this one ran a little bit long. Um, may have some other guests here in the future. Who knows? But until then, I'll see y'all next week. Roush is out. See ya.